Hey everyone, this here is Dustin Watts's brilliant ESP32 touchdown. It's an ESP32 based sort of like um, a stream deck where you can have all your hotkeys set up on a, a touch screen like this. This thing is brilliant. Uh, that's mostly because Dustin is brilliant. But for those of us who are not brilliant, I want to make something like this, but instead of using complicated touchscreens and ESP32s, I want to use an Arduino Pro Micro and some of these, uh, which is a key switch for a keyboard, and some of these, which are the key caps, which have uh, spots that you can put a paper insert in. So let's see what I've designed. And of course, every day where you get PCBs in the mail is Christmas Day. So let's take a look at these. Oh, baby. So I managed to make these uh, just inside of the um, size limit to get $5 board. So these things should be five bucks. I uh, need to change the lighting. So as you can see, um, this should give you a 4x4 matrix of uh, switches, 5 here, and this was uh, $5, actually it was $8, uh, because I always uh, check off the option to not have the little um, markings on the board. Pretty neat. So uh, let's go get some switches and see if they fit in here. I suppose before that I should go over some of the features, because uh, I was really careful to set this up in a way uh, that would be useful for kind of everybody. So uh, first and foremost, so we have the uh, switch outlines here. Uh, so one, two, three, four, you know, numbered all the way down to 16. I also broke out, um, so the Pro Micro can be soldered right here, but I broke out all the unused uh, pads. So you see here, uh, TX0, RX1, D10, D14, D15, AO, AO, uh, A1, A2, and A3. They're all broken out. On top of that, uh, the switch is a dual footprint. So they should fit these uh, cherry style switches. These are uh, Utemu reds. And I, th I think they're exactly the same as a cherry MX switch, but I can't be 100% sure. But you see it does fit in there and there's a little bit of play. But beside it, there's these two um, pads. And these are uh, spaced properly for a pin header. So if you want to have this mounted elsewhere and wires going to a button box, you can do that too. As well as for these diodes here, these are a dual footprint as well. So on the outside, you have the regular through-hole pads, but in the middle here, you have a the little uh, surface mount diode, diode package right there. So quite a few things you can do with this. Got mounting holes as well, M3 screws. Um, everything should work just fine. And the only thing really I want to add to a future revision of this is instead of um, having these holes or as well as having these holes, I would like to make the little uh, the surface mount adapters that make these switches hot swappable because at the moment, you do have to sacrifice, you know, 16 switches permanently. And the thing with these switches is they have millions of cycles in them. So when you get tired of this or when you increase the revision, my goal is to pop these things out, you know, future revision, pop them out and use them in another project. So that's the thought. Uh, the other thing I got to make sure of is if they'll fit, if the spacing is good, with the keycaps and so I have these keycaps here uh, that have sort of potential for labeling on them and so I just want to make sure if I put two of them side by side uh, that they'll actually still fit so that fits in here oh yeah I don't think the cap takes up much more space so I did measure this out before I ordered the boards but you just never know what it's going to look like um, because you know you can look at it on paper all you want but the usability is different on paper than in real world often and there you go plenty of space to hit one button or the other 
You just support it a little bit. There we go. Cool. I suppose the next goal would be to assemble this thing and uh, do some testing. I actually did the unimportant soldering off camera. You guys have seen me put, um, you know, diodes in multiple times. I put uh, the, the Pro Micro in a, a socket. And now it's time to install the switches. I've got these um, linear black switches here. Uh, and the problem is these things do not mount to the PCB. They, I mean, they solder to the PCB, but they don't mount to it. You have to mount them in a frame. So they actually just clip in like this. So this is a frame that I've designed specifically for this purpose. Uh, and my point is I'm going to be putting this in, centering it up, and then I should be able to just drop the board on the back. And the way I'm going to drop the board on, you know, it's going to be sort of like this. It should fit just perfectly. There we go. And then the uh, switches will actually inform how this sits um, on the front. And then, you know, this will be unremovable after without desoldering all these switches. So do all your stuff you need to do first. Uh, set the switches in solder the back and then I have a little mount I've designed that will sit on the back like so and then let this sit up like a little keypad. So let me just, let me just push all the switches in and I'll put this on a uh, PCB holder and then we can solder. Got myself all set up here. Uh, I don't have a good way to hold this board so I'm just going to show you. So here's all the switches and the keycaps they should fit with enough space in between them. So that is good. And basically, I'm just going to solder the little uh, feet sticking out there. I'm going to try not to apply too much heat because I'm not sure how resistant these switches are, uh, them being not genuine cherry switches or anything. But the pads should be fairly small, so it should be fairly easy to solder. Okay, clearly there's a little bit of heat retention there. Not too, too bad. There we go. Hopefully that switch will work now. Seems all right. Now I got to go and do all of them. Well, there it goes, pretty much done. Uh, all the soldering is done on the back here. Uh, I need to test to see if the switches work, if they made contact, but they all look pretty good. Uh, just going to install my backing here so I don't have to hold it, install the keycaps, and then we're going to be good to go. So I just made this. Uh, the holes on the backing are slightly bigger, and the holes on the front portion is slightly smaller, so an M3 screw actually uh, threads right in. Uh, don't over tighten this. This is not something you need to torque to yield or anything. This is just to hold everything together. There we go. Attach that. Attach that. And there we go. So now I've got a little stand up uh, board here. And then all you got to do is you pop on the keycaps. And of course, you can make labels for the keycaps. They're easily removable. You just pull them out. Uh, it's nice because the switch is supported by the frame. So you can pull off the keycaps and it won't stress the solder. There are other kinds of these switches that actually are supported by the um, by little screws in the back. And there we go. Got a neat little macro pad. 
And now you'll have to excuse me while I spend the next uh, couple hours doing some coding. Many hours later. Got it all coded up. And um, the crux of the code is based on this uh, simple keypad library um, by Maxim Borer. Uh, and actually, it's just the uh, example sketch and extended out. Uh, so you got to include the keyboard and the simple keypad uh, libraries. Uh, keyboard is from before, simple keypad is from the, the sketch. Um, and this here I left alone. Uh, so basically, this is just setting up everything for the keypad to work. Um, and then uh, also... Uh, this one here sets up our keypad at the same time. And then uh, basically when you press a key, um, what happens is uh, you th this here happens. It gets a key. And if there's a key that's been, that's been pressed, uh, it print, prints which key it was. Now what I added is down here. So... Um, the keys will be named one, two, three, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, star, pound, uh, zero, A, B, C, D, like that. And basically, all I did was I just uh, named every key in order. Uh, and if the key equals that, so this one was D, you know, pound sign zero, uh, then I made it press a key and then release all the keys. The keys I used are F13 up to F24. Those are uh, function keys that your keyboard does not have normally, but the keyboard library supports. And because I have 16 keys, which is more than the 12 provided by this, um, I had to add a modifier. So press down the shift, press down the F13, then release the F13 and release the shift. And the only way I got all games to recognize this clearly was if I added a 250 millisecond delay between all of those steps. Um, it would still work as a hotkey if you uh, didn't add the delay, but the specific game that I was uh, making this for, Beam NG Drive, it would not see it when you go to record the hotkey. And so the macro pad literally just sends key presses as if you were to press it and release it. And it's actually like quite quick. It's like, you know, in the order of uh, milliseconds. So if you need to slow it down, you can always add a delay between this line and this line. Um, but because it just sends an instant little key press, all you have to do is in your game's uh, control manager, you just set a new key, like a new hotkey assign. And when it tells you to press the key you want to assign, you just press the, the key on your numpad and it'll send the key assignment. So as long as you remember which one of the keys is on your keypad, um, and then it's that simple. It just assigns it by itself. So let me show you the labels I have installed on my macro pad after I've assigned the hotkeys. And so here is the finished product without the uh, kickstand so I can uh, show you lay flat on the desk. But yeah, this is my macro pad and it is specially set up right now for me for Beam NG Drive, a uh, driving simulator game. And let me just go over the icons I made quickly. Now, all I did was the faces of these switches or, or these keycaps are a 12 millimeters by 12 millimeters. So what I did is I went on Inkscape, made a box 12 millimeters by 12 millimeters, went online, find some, found some icons, dragged them into Ink, Inkscape, shaped them, and then, you know, made them into a sheet. Looks like this. Now these are just the same. Th these two are the only unique ones. Then I copied them over a few times, so, you know, my wife can have some, or I can make some different keys and swap them out. Um, but for BeamNG, it's a uh, driving game. So I have a uh, low range, high range gearbox. Um, this is a uh, center diff on off. This is diff locks. Uh, this is transmission range. You got your hazard lights, uh, turn signal, turn signal, uh, high beam, low beam. You got um, uh, uh, traction control and uh, whatever it's, yeah, traction control. Um, 
And then you've got nitrous, you've got the light bar, you've got the parking brake, and then here it's accept mission, pause, cycle through the camera modes, and uh, restart or reset. And so all this uh, happens with the Pro Micro plugged into the PC, so you have this thing, but much dumber and simply made. So this is what I've come up with. Um, now, I do have improvements for this, which will be coming in the near future. Um, I am planning on using a analog pin to read all of these, um, these buttons, which is possible. So next revision, that'll be possible. And then the next revision, I will be exploiting the uh, ability to light these things from the back with RGB LEDs. So hopefully, if you're into it, you'll be looking forward to that on this channel. Anything else you want me to do with this macro pad, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to get yours, of course, the link is in the description to PCBWay. Thanks for watching.